Okay, so, of course, so the first section of Chapter 5, we talked about how to make、um, periodic inventory purchases. Now, of course, when we make purchases, we also are going to assume that we can also make some returns and allowances. Now, as a customer, right, we're purchasing items from a vendor. So, what usually happens is that there's many times where、um, you know, the vendor may ship you the wrong item. Okay, they might, be, they might ship you damaged goods or even things due to shipping itself. They could accidentally、um, you know, ruin your inventory or make it unavailable for you to be able to sell it out to the public. So, with that being said, right, there are many reasons why you would want to return or get an allowance for purchasing inventory, okay? Due to any of these things that happen, right? Now, of course, as a vendor to customer relationship, right, because a, mer-、uh, a manufacturing person, right, since, your main, since their main、uh, business comes from companies that Purchase in bulk or purchase in large, large quantities, you know, they want to make sure that they guarantee that they keep you as a customer. So,、uh, with that being said, they can have special、um, offers for to find any kind of means to keep your company because, again, you are a huge part of their sales, right? You're one of the companies that's buying in bulk in large amounts. So, they want to try to keep you as a, 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 in good company by offering these extra additions when you're making the relationship.、Um, in this case, right, they can give special privileges such as discount prices, okay? They can even send you、um, special offers. They can give you unlimited returns and, of products, and they might even give you. 100% money back guaranteed if you're completely unsatisfied with it. And that's the great thing about、um, buying from a manufacturer. Okay? However,、um, the whole purpose of this, okay, when we return, oops, sorry, when we return our items is that we're only doing it because our motive is to try to resell it. There's no purpose to. Buy something and it comes to you broken and you can't sell it, then you take a loss that way, which you shouldn't have to because at the ultimate, at the, at the end of the day, whoever products that you purchase from, it's their name that's also kind of out there as well. As I, that you should also market your, the manufacturer as their brand name. So if they're sending you broken items, then you can obviously tell that this company doesn't really care. So, in this case, right,、um, what do we do when we need to make a return? So, for this example here, we obviously need to make the purchase first. So, on January 1st, okay, you purchase 100 coffee mugs、um, on an account from Cuppies Co., and each cup costs you $1.25 each, and the shipping costs you $100. Record this transaction, okay? So, again, we're dealing with periodic inventory. So, we're going to recognize the date. We're going to recognize purchase expense, freight expense, and accounts payable because that's what the circumstances was. That's what the scenario was. We purchased the inventory items, and this is what it cost me. Okay? Now, in this example here, where、um, on it, Uh, January 5th, okay, you are, received the items already and you found out that 10 of those coffee mugs were actually broken, okay? And of course, you request a full refund on、um, those broken mugs from the vendor, okay? And of course, the vendor, because you know, they sold coffee mugs to you, they agree and they went ahead and grant you a full refund for it. So let's go ahead and record this transaction. So, this is where we're going to be creating another Contra account, okay? All right? Because in this case, right, we purchased our 
items from from the very beginning, right? We purchased it and we recognized that each cup was a dollar and twenty five cents each, and that um, you know that you recorded that you received a hundred of them of the items. But if ten of those items are actually bad because they came out to you be broken, right? You're requesting a full refund from the vendor. So how do you think this should happen? All right? Any guesses? Um, with account, accounts are payable. Good, because in this case, right, we recognize that they that we owe them money, right? So in this case, because they charged us, okay, in context, right? They charged us full price for the full amount of 100 items, okay? And in this case, because we're making a returns and allowances, right? We're going to reduce our accounts payable, okay? And I'm also going to be introducing, again, another contra account called purchase returns and allowances. Now, in this case, right, how much did the coffee cups actually cost me? How much does the actual coffee cups cost me per per cup? How much did it cost you? Twelve fifty. Uh, a dollar twenty five times ten. Oh yeah. Right, it cost you a dollar twenty five cents each for each coffee cup, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, because I'm requesting the vendor, I want a refund for ten of those coffee cups, right? You're gonna take your ten. You're going to multiply it by $1.25 to get you $12.50. Now, in this case, right, why am I not including freight? It's the same scenario, right? You paid freight in order to get the coffee mugs to your store. And in this case, can the um, vendor refund you for the freight? No, you can't return freight, right? Because it already happened. It's a separate cost to the business, right? To ship out the items to the store. So in this case, same idea here is where you might not have, they, they, you cannot uh, refund on freight because it was a separate cost. So in this case, right, if you have broken mugs, or most likely they're not going to have you ship it back. But if they do, for any reason, require you to ship back any items or anything, it, it's either they have to pay for it or they refund you that portion. But in most cases, it's a broken coffee mug. Who would want a sh to be shipped back broken coffee mugs, right? So in this case, right, no, it's not going to be included in the price that you're being refunded for. So in this case, because we're using a contra account, purchase returns and allowances, which is a contra account to the purchase expense, okay? So therefore, it must be credited by the $12.50. And then there you have it. You're going to reduce it to the actual bill that you owe. So in this case, you owe, the bill's going to say that you, they, that you only um, that you only purchase 90 cups instead of 100 because you returned 10. Okay? Any questions here? Mm, no. Okay. So then, what if we have this scenario instead where um, in most cases when you are a smaller type of business, Yes, you can, um, especially for vendors, they do this too, is that they can haggle you or they can give you discounts instead of giving you a refund. And we call that as an allowance, okay? So this example here says that on January 5th, you um, received your items and found that 25 of those coffee mugs were the wrong size, okay? And then you requested um, for a, a refund from the vendor because of the, you, they shipped out to you extra large coffee cups, okay? Now, this is what the vendor can do. The vendor can convince you to keep those coffee mugs because at the end of the day, you could still sell those materials, right? They're still, um, you know, items that you can potentially sell. Of course, 
uh, to the vendor, right? They don't want to give you any other extra stuff except for maybe they might offer you a discount on top of it saying, I'm so sorry, um, I sent you the wrong um, coffee mugs. You know, I'm so sorry for my mistake. I will offer you a, offer you a, gener a generous, um, what is it, 20% discount because it was my mistake. All right. And that's what most cases uh, um, a lot of vendors will do because they want to keep you as, you know, part of their, they want to keep you as a good company that they're going to keep sending you stuff to. So it's very, very common that they will try to convince you somehow to say, oh, don't take a full refund because you can sell those coffee cups in your store, but because I made this mistake and sent you the wrong items, I'm going to give you um, either a discount that you can apply to your invoice now, or I can hold it and retain it for a future purchase. So if you do purchase something else, I'll discount you the next time, okay? So that's going to be most case scenario because, again, they want to keep you as a company, but also they are trying to find a way to... Um, you know, apologize and make the situation better by offering extra discounts and extra things like that. So in this case, right, the vendor offers you a 20% discount and you accept it. So let's go ahead and record this transaction. So in this case, right, right, on January 1st, I already purchased my inventory items, right? I purchased 100 toys, I'm sorry, 100 cups, and now, fast forward a couple of days later, I'm going to try to return 25 of them, but they convinced me somehow to keep them and only take a 20% discount. So how do I record this transaction? Okay, good. You're going to decrease your accounts payable because in this aspect, right, we're assuming that, you know, we told them, okay, I'll take the discount, but I want you to apply it to the current invoice. So then when I pay, make a payment, it's going to be significantly less. Then yes, you would definitely reduce your accounts payable. Now by how much? Okay. So in this case, right, how much was one coffee mug, okay? If one coffee mug was $1.25, right? And I'm trying to attempt to return 25 of them, right? But they decide to say, no, we'll give you, uh, or we'll offer you a 20% discount off of those coffee mugs because we sent you the wrong size. So in this case, right, I'm only going to be taking 25 20% discount. I'm still paying for those 25 mugs. Just those 25 mugs are going to be discounted. All right? So wouldn't that be 31.25? Okay, so 31.25 is going to be the full price of just doing the refund on itself, right? Of refunding yeah. the full 25 cups at $1.25. But in this case, because they offer a discount, you're still paying for those 25 mugs, but you're paying them at a discounted price. So in this case, to figure out how much to reduce, you're going to take the, the discounted amount, multiply it by the total amount that you should be refunded for, and then that's going to give you $6.25. So $31.25 times 20%. So that means you're paying 80% of the coffee mugs. Okay. So therefore, you're going to get an allowance of $6.25. Okay. So one difference here is that one, you are not actually refunding the coffee mugs. They're still 
Oh, uh, there's still something that you purchased, right? But you're getting a discount on top of it. So in this case, what an allowance is that it, it, it's basically not the full money back, but it's a portion of the money back, whether you keep the items or not. Okay. So in this case, we are keeping the items. Okay. And we're getting a discount off of the actual wool coffee mugs itself. So instead of paying a dollar twenty-five, you're paying twenty percent. Um, less okay and that's how you do a an allowance okay so a purchase returns and a purchase allowance actually do the same thing so in this case we decided to just for this for the scenario we just combine the two and it's called the account purchase returns and allowances okay many companies will have separate situations where they'll have just a returns a purchase discounts, a purchase returns, and a purchase allowance, okay? Yes, but what I'm telling you here is that returns and allowances kind of function the same exact way. It's not the same thing as a discount, obviously, um, but it is definitely um, something here because in this case, right, we're attempting to return, but the vendor tells us, mm, how about this? I give you a discount instead. So in this case, right, when you talk about purchase discounts, that means everybody gets the same exact discount, all right? It's not an individually based discount. But in this scenario here, right, we're attempting to return something and this is their means to try to keep our company by offering us a special discount that only us as a customer gets because we're trying to uh, return merchandise. Okay, so that's the difference between a, a, a purchase discount and a purchase returns and allowances. Okay. Any questions here? No. No. Me, I have a question. Go for it. Uh, this offer, 20% it is discount. And you said this purchase return and allowances. Correct, because in this case, right, we're attempting yes. to return the items, right? Where the where the, the vendor said no. They convinced us and said, how about you take a discount instead? Okay, so the idea here is that we're trying to return something, but the vendor convinced us to take a discount instead. Okay, where an actual discount is where it applies to everybody, like, Every person will get the discount regardless of what the situation is. They will always get the discount. So a sales discount, right? When you have an, uh, a store-wide discount, everybody gets that discount, okay? But in this case, I'm attempting to return something. And this is a personal discount off of these items that I'm trying to return. And I'm not getting a refund for the full amount. I'm only getting a portion of the money back. So that, therefore, that becomes an allowance. Okay, does that make sense? No, I mean, why you don't you didn't record this transaction as purchase discount, purchase retail? What? Why it is a purchase discount? Interesting. Maggie. I just explained it about, about, again, it's because you're attempting to return something, okay? But in this case, the vendor said, no, take a discount instead. Because the idea is that you are requesting for a refund, but you're only getting a portion of the money back. That is why this is considered an allowance instead of a discount. This isn't a normal discount that anybody can get. That is the difference between a purchase discount and a returns and allowance. One is that because you're attempting to return a product, but the person said, no, take a discount. So therefore, that becomes an allowance. You're not getting all of your money back. You're only getting a small section of your money back, okay? Where a purchase discount, anybody can get. Anybody can be offered terms. Okay, this is a personal discount because the vendor made it 
based upon because I'm trying to return the product to them. Yes? Okay. Okay? Thank you. So this is not a discount per se because I'm wanting a refund, but they're only giving me an allowance to get some of my money back. They're only allowing me to get some of my money back. Yes? Okay, okay. thank you. Any other questions? All right, and that's it for 5.2, right? We just talked about purchase returns and allowances, okay? Um, whether you do a full purchase returns, right? You would just do uh, purchase returns, and then if you pay it on the account, then you'll get your money back or reduce the liabilities, or you can get your money back. And the other situation was when we got a an allowance, okay, where we were attempting to get money back, but instead we accepted a discount, or in this case, a personal discount, okay? So that is it, and those are the journals that come with it, okay? So let's go ahead and complete um, the exercise here for 5.2, okay? Where we're gonna have a bunch of scenarios where we will be um, purchasing stuff, and then we'll be returning stuff as well, okay? So the very first one here, right, your job here is to journalize the transactions, okay? And it says here, assume that all purchases were made on an account, okay? So that's key factor there. So on April 5th, you purchased a thousand units at five dollars each with the freight costing you a hundred dollars so how do i journalize this first transaction and these are all cash pay, uh, cash right no it says right here assume that all um all uh purchases oh, okay. were made on an account okay i missed that part okay uh, so purchase expense of five thousand and freight cost of one hundred. And then account payable would be five thousand one hundred. Okay. So account payable. Now, this is where I was talking about earlier about having the, the description available to you. So, in this case, I purchased 1,000 units at $5 each, right? So, this is important because when you do end up returning stuff, right, what can and how much are you going to be uh, returning? So, in this case, right, the next example here is that on April 7th, you end up returning 200 um, damaged units for a full refund, okay? Now, in this case, if you didn't have the scenario just exactly like this, you wouldn't know unless you look back in your journal. So, in this case, it is now April 7th, and I'm returning 200 units for a full refund, okay? So, how do I journalize that? I'm returning um, 200 units for a full refund. Account payable first. Accounts payable first because we're going to recognize that we're going to owe less. Good. $1,000, 1, right? 200 right? How much did it cost me in that previous batch, right? It cost me $5 per item, right? Yes. So in this case, right, I returned 200. 200 times 5 is 1,000. 1,000 dollars I am getting a refund for. Okay? And what's my account going to be here? Refundable. I'm sorry? Refund allowances. Okay, so purchase, returns, and allowances. 
Okay, I'm gonna put allowances for short, okay? Good, and then I'm gonna even make a note here that I returned 200 units at $5 each full refund. Okay, good, all right? Now, in most scenarios, when you make purchases of inventory, usually if you are returning something, that usually happens from the previous batch that you purchased. Because in this case, right, I can't just return 200 units, okay? Um, and then fast forward 10 days later, I'm gonna return 50 units. No, it doesn't work that way, all right? Usually when you receive your inventory, your first bet is that you should open up all the boxes to check to make sure that number one, that all the inventory items are there. And then number two, check to see if there are any damaged goods and or damaged items. So in this case, right, that means every time I make a purchase, that should be the very first thing that you should do is open it up, check to make sure that they're all good and that they're all there, all right? And then you can go ahead and make your um, returns and allowances if necessary, okay? So in this case, right, April 10 rolls around and you end up purchasing an additional 750 units for $5.75 each and your freight costs $75. So in this case, I need to journalize this transaction. So it is April 10. How do I journalize that I purchased more inventory? Uh, purchase expense. Okay. Purchase expense. Okay. Uh, with a 4,312,650. Good. And, and then a and the freight cost is 75. Giving me a grand total of? Uh, with a total of uh, 4,387 with 50 cents. Good, excellent. So then in this case, right, I'm gonna make a note that I purchased Seven hundred and fifty units at five dollars and seventy five cents each. Okay. So then April fifteen, I returned fifty broken units due to shipment for a full refund. So in this case, I found that um I found that uh, 50 of them were broken, okay? So in this case, I requested for a full refund, okay? As of April 15, okay? So how do I journalize this? Uh, with an account payable of 287.50. Is that correct? How did you figure that number out? Brian, how did you figure that number out? Oh, 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 uh, 50 times 5, uh, 75. Good, right? Because I'm getting a full refund. I'm not getting an allowance. I'm getting a full, full refund because the items were broken due to shipment. So in this case, 50 times $5.75 gives you $287.50. Good, all right? And in this case, what's my contra account going to be? Uh, purchases and return, uh, purchases, uh, returns and allowance. Okay, good. For the two hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents. So again, we found fifty of those items were broken, and it cost us 
$5.75 each. So in this case, we're getting a full refund. So again, I'm going to put return 50 broken units at $5.75 each for full refund. Good. So then let's see what happened next. Let me add a couple more lines here. Okay. So let's see what happened next. So then on April 20th, we purchased 200 units at uh, $6 each with the freight costing $20. Okay. So in this case, it is April 20th. We purchased... 200 units at six dollars each uh with a purchase expense of 1200 okay with, with a freight cost of 220 and with an account payable of 1220 good okay and once again, I'm going to fill in my description that I purchased 200 units at $6 each. Okay. Then April 22nd rolls around, and 25 of the units were the wrong color, but you were willing to accept a 20% discount. Okay? So in this case, right, the shipment for on April 20th, right, you open up on the boxes, and 25 of the units were the wrong color. All right? Maybe they were blue instead of green. So in this case, right, if they were the wrong color, but the vendor somehow convinced you that, hey, keep those, keep those items because you could still sell them. They're just different colors, okay? And in this case, they offer you for, for Ruppenman, you know, for their mistake, they decided to offer you a 20% discount and you accept it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how uh, to journalize this transaction, okay? Okay, so it is April 22nd, all right? How do we record this transaction? Uh, with a account payable of 30, which is, um, how do I say it? Uh, with uh, 25 times six with times 20. Good, right? right. That's exactly correct, right? If you take, so we're, we have 25 of them that are the wrong color, right? If you take your 25, multiply it by the $6, you should get $150, right? And because we're only getting discounted 20% of it, right? If we times it by that 20%, it should be $30, okay? So that's all we're getting. We're getting a discount off of those 25 um wrong colored ones but in this case right because we attempted to try to return the items we're only getting a portion of the money back so what's my account that i'm going to put here uh purchases returns and allowance good purchase returns and allowance this is the allowance section of this scenario here okay allowances Okay. And of course, we're going to make sure that we write here that we got an allowance okay, on 25 units at $6 each okay, for a 20% discount. Okay. That way, you know exactly what that allowance was for. It was for 25 um, units, okay? That cost you $6 each, and you got it for a 20% discount. Right. 
Last but not least, we have here on April 25th that you purchased 500 units at $6.25 each with the freight costing you 50. So let's journalize this last one for April 25th, right? We have a purchase expense and a freight expense, okay? For we purchased 500 units at $6.25 each with a freight of $50. So, what's my purchase expense? Uh, $3,125. What was my freight expense? $50. So, what's my total amount of accounts payable? Three thousand one hundred and seventy-five. Good. And last but not least, let's put my description in here for purchased five hundred units at six dollars and twenty-five cents each. Okay. So this allows us again. The description is important, especially if you have purchase expense, freight expense. How can I tell how many items did I buy? How how can I tell how many items did it each cost? So this is where, as long as you have your description in parentheses, that's all you have to put there. Okay. Good job. All right. Any questions in regards to 5.2 returns and allowances? No. All right. That is it for today. So...